isn't it? We're a full 1,000 feet above the Earth, standing on top of Chicago's skyline. From down here on the street, the world's tallest reinforced concrete building is just as majestic and awe-inspiring. This is the 311 South Wacker Drive building. And it's just one building in a city that has many reinforced concrete high-rise buildings dominating its skyline. Throughout the whole country, reinforced concrete as a structural system, as well as a building technique, is enjoying an increasing popularity with architects. And reinforced concrete is such an incredibly versatile structural system, it easily adapts to any architectural style. Quite simply, it has an unparalleled flexibility and the structural integrity to work beautifully on virtually any type of building at any scale. Low rise, medium rise, and of course, high rise. Why did all of the architects who designed these buildings and this one choose reinforced concrete as a preferred building technique and structural framing system? Well, these decisions were the result of a detailed and sometimes very complex decision-making process. We call it the conceptual selection process. The whole design and construction process could be divided into four distinct phases, but conceptual selection takes place early in the first two phases. The first phase, the conceptualization phase, really is most important. The architect first develops the criteria for the building project. Here, the architect sorts through all the requirements, desires, and constraints the team will encounter. During this initial stage, the architect's creative energies are used to transform the owner's needs into suitable structural systems. Careful thought is given to the appropriate architectural responses, such as style, context, form, and function. And perhaps, most importantly, in this initial phase, architects narrow their choices of these systems in the search to find the system that will most appropriately function as well as enrich their design. An entire team of professionals has a voice in that all-important structural framing decision. The owner, developer, architect, structural engineer, mechanical engineer, and contractor can all be influential. But in most cases, the architect becomes the leader, receiving input from the other disciplines. Phase two, the design development phase, takes the early decisions and refines them. Here the structural framing decision is finalized, and quite frequently these days, project teams are selecting reinforced concrete as the preferred structural framing system for their building design. The project team considers such key factors as cost, base sizes, the lateral resistance system, design flexibility, story height, durability, aesthetics, and exterior details, as well as other factors. When you get into the details in this phase, the choices become clearer. Reinforced concrete is a very advantageous system. The architect typically works closely with the mechanical engineer in the early phases of the decision-making process because mechanical considerations directly impact the spatial relationships of the building. The structural engineer has a role in the decision-making process going on during this design development phase as well. Structural engineers often prefer working with concrete, knowing its adaptability and coordinating with other building systems. It's also more adaptable to modifications than any other structural building material, especially in the field. In a purely structural sense, no other material provides the strength, stiffness, plasticity, and lateral resistance of cast-in-place reinforced concrete. What factors are considered when conceptualizing the structural framing decision? Many factors are considered. In developing the criteria, the requirements, desires, and constraints need to be identified and evaluated. The most important factors are then used to evaluate the suitable systems. We've found that the most important factors are cost, the flexibility of the design, base size, and the lateral force resisting requirements. But the main driving force in the decision process is that the costs for design and construction must meet the owner's budget. The architect and the owner need to look at all the components of cost. 
Reinforced concrete offers your clients clear advantages over other material framing systems such as structural steel. For instance, you can design buildings in concrete with shorter floor-to-floor -floor heights than structural steel, up to two feet shorter. A shorter building height means cost savings for exterior cladding and for mechanical, electrical, and plumbing systems. Cast-in-place reinforced concrete drastically reduces construction startup time because all the materials are readily available. You're creating beams and columns at the site. With steel, you have to wait for a long delivery process from the mill. Studies show that with structural steel, you could be waiting months just for the materials to arrive. Here's another advantage. The design and construction of the $42 million, 300,000 square foot office complex was completed in 17 months. Reinforced concrete saves months of construction time because electrical, mechanical, and HVAC systems, as well as interior walls, can be installed while the frame is progressing upward. Concrete's large thermal mass helps maintain a steady, comfortable temperature inside the building with smaller heating, ventilation and air conditioning systems, and with smaller energy bills. Concrete's inherent fire resistance also can result in significant cost savings, since little or no extra fireproofing is generally required. More and more, reinforced concrete is the construction method of choice specified by architects across the country. It has earned a solid reputation in buildings of all sorts for good reasons. As we pointed out, reinforced concrete gives you greater flexibility in design. Its design flexibility is virtually unlimited, letting the architect do what he really enjoys, design. From the unusual to the monumental. The word concrete has become a synonym for the words permanent and durable, and for good reasons. This Frank Lloyd Wright building was constructed in 1908. All across the country, cast-in-place reinforced concrete has earned a well-deserved reputation as the design and construction technique that creates buildings that retain their integrity and appearance indefinitely, with minimal upkeep. Conventionally reinforced concrete also has a solid reputation for tremendous structural integrity at a time when alternative systems have come under serious scrutiny because of structural problems uncovered after earthquakes in California. New advances in high strength concrete, flying forms, and efficient pumping and placement techniques have all made cast in place concrete systems efficient and affordable. Besides all the positive things you hear about reinforced concrete, you hear some myths, too. Myths that just are not true. Short spans only? Nothing could be further from the truth. On the contrary, today's high-strength mix designs and advanced reinforcing technologies allow longer spans and smaller columns. That gives you more marketable space than structural steel. In addition, you have great flexibility and support placement so you can design spaces tailor-made to the needs of the owner or tenants. Low seismic resistance is another unfounded myth. The facts are, if properly installed, steel reinforcement offers better seismic resistance than structural steel and costs less to build in the bargain. Just take a look at the Burbank Tower in Burbank, California. This 32-story office building is the tallest concrete building in Seismic Zone 4. It was built for $10 per square foot less than a steel frame building of similar size. And after the 1994 Northridge earthquake, it was immediately inspected by the structural engineer and had absolutely no damage, while the owners of structural steel buildings have been uncovering cracks and fractured welds in their buildings. Yes, clear away the myths and you see the real picture. Reinforced concrete is a cost-effective material. It has virtually every property an architect needs, creatively and functionally. With it, you can design economically without compromising design potential. And these buildings will stand rock solid for decades with little maintenance, the real desire of every building owner. Everything about these buildings exudes high quality. You can use reinforced concrete to build structures of the highest quality 
with long-lasting durability and the finest aesthetics. So when you conduct your own conceptual selection process, be sure to identify and rank the important factors to be considered in your decision. And when you evaluate these factors, be sure your material perception is based on current, accurate data. With conventionally reinforced concrete structures, even the sky offers you no limits. Want to know more about reinforced concrete and the conceptual selection process? The Concrete Reinforcing Steel Institute has two new products to help you in your decision making. The new guide to structural system selection will enable you to go through the whole structural system selection process so that you identify and evaluate all the necessary criteria to make the best decision on your building projects. And the new workbook for evaluating concrete building designs will provide you with all the detail to confirm your structural selection, giving you material quantities and costs. CRSI is an allied organizational member of the American Institute of Architects and for more than 70 years has been dedicated to the quality design and construction of cast-in-place reinforced concrete systems.